El Baz had all three Prime Crew astronauts describe geologic features they saw during their flights between Houston and KSC. Mattingly's enthusiasm caused other astronauts, such as Apollo 14 CMP, Rusa, to seek out El Baz as a teacher. Concerned about how close Apollo 11's LM, Eagle, had come to running out of propellant during its lunar descent, mission planners decided that beginning with Apollo 13, the CSM would bring the LM to the low orbit from which the landing attempt would commence. This was a change from Apollo 11 and 12, on which the LM made the burn to bring it to the lower orbit. The change was part of an effort to increase the amount of hover time available to the astronauts as the missions headed into rougher terrain. The plan was to devote the first of the two four-hour lunar surface extravehicular activities to setting up the Apollo Lunar Surface Experiments Package Group of Scientific Instruments. During the second, Lovell and Hayes would investigate Cone Crater, near the planned landing site. The two astronauts wore their spacesuits for some 20 walkthroughs of EVA procedures, including sample gathering and use of tools and other equipment. They flew in the Vomit Comet in simulated microgravity or lunar gravity, including practice in donning and doffing spacesuits. To prepare for the descent to the moon's surface, Lovell flew the lunar landing training vehicle. Despite four of the five LLTVs and similar lunar landing research vehicles having crashed during the Apollo program, mission commanders considered flying them invaluable experience. Apollo 13's designated landing site was near Fra Mauro Crater. The Fra Mauro formation was believed to contain much material spattered by the impact that had filled the Imbrium Basin early in the Moon's history. Dating it would provide information not only about the Moon, but about the Earth's early history. Apollo 11 had left a seismometer on the Moon, but the solar-powered unit did not survive its first two-week-long lunar night. The Apollo 12 astronauts also left one as part of its ALSCP, which was nuclear-powered. Apollo 13 also carried a seismometer, similar to Apollo 12's, as part of its ALSCP, to be left on the moon by the astronauts. That seismometer was to be calibrated by the impact, after jettison, of the ascent stage of Apollo 13's LM, an object of known mass and velocity impacting at a known location. Other ALSCP experiments on Apollo 13 included a heat flow experiment, which would involve drilling two holes 3.0 meters deep, a charged particle lunar environment experiment measured the protons and electrons of solar origin reaching the moon. The heat flow experiment and the CPLEE were flown for the first time on Apollo 13, the other experiments had been flown before. Developed by the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, SNAP-27 was first flown on Apollo 12. The cask placed around the capsule for transport to the moon was built with heat shields of graphite and a beryllium, and with structural parts of titanium and of Inconel materials. A United States flag was also taken, to be erected on the moon's surface. For Apollo 11 and 12, the flag had been placed in a heat-resistant tube on the front landing leg, it was moved for Apollo 13 to the modularized equipment stowage assembly in the LM descent stage. The structure to fly the flag on the airless moon was improved from Apollo 12's. For the first time, red stripes were placed on the helmet, arms and legs of the commander's A7L spacesuit. This was done as, after Apollo 11, those reviewing the images taken had trouble distinguishing Armstrong from Aldrin, but the change was approved too late for Apollo 12. New drink bags that attached inside the helmets and were to be sipped from as the astronauts walked on the moon were demonstrated by Hayes during Apollo 13's final television broadcast before the accident. Apollo 13's primary mission objectives were to perform selenological inspection, survey, and sampling of materials in a pre-selected region of the Fra Mauro formation. Deploy and activate an Apollo Lunar Surface Experiments Package. Develop man's capability to work in the lunar environment. Obtain photographs of candidate exploration sites. The astronauts were also to accomplish other photographic objectives, including of the Gegenschein from lunar orbit, and of the Moon itself on the journey back to Earth. Some of this photography was to be performed by Swigert as Lovell and Hayes walked on the Moon. Apollo 13 had 12 cameras on board, including those for television and moving pictures. The crew was also to downlink bistatic radar observations of the moon. The mission was launched at the planned time, 2.13.00 p.m. est on April 11. Starting with Apollo 10, the vehicle's guidance system was designed to shut the engine down in response to chamber pressure excursions. Pogo oscillations had occurred on Titan rockets and on previous Apollo missions, but on Apollo 13 they were amplified by an interaction with turbopump cavitation. A fix to prevent Pogo was ready for the mission, but schedule pressure did not permit the hardware's integration into the Apollo 13 vehicle. The four outboard engines in the SIVB third stage burned longer to compensate, 
and the vehicle achieved very close to the planned circular 190 km parking orbit, followed by a translunar injection about two hours later, setting the mission on course for the moon. Ground controllers then sent the third stage on a course to impact the moon in range of the Apollo 12 seismometer, which it did just over three days into the mission. At 30 hours 40 minutes and 50 seconds into the mission, with the TV camera running, the crew performed a burn to place Apollo 13 on a hybrid trajectory. The departure from a free return trajectory meant that if no further burns were performed, Apollo 13 would miss Earth on its return trajectory, rather than intercept it, as with a free return. Communications were enlivened when Swigert realized that in the last-minute rush, he had omitted to file his federal income tax return, and amid laughter from mission controllers, asked how he could get an extension. Entry into the LM to test its systems had been scheduled for 58 hours 0 minutes and 0 seconds, when the crew awoke on the third day of the mission, they were informed it had been moved up three hours and was later moved up again by another hour. The audience was limited since none of the television networks were carrying the broadcast, forcing Marilyn Lovell to go to the VIP room at Mission Control if she wanted to watch her husband and his crewmates. Approximately six and a half minutes after the TV broadcast, approaching 56 hours 0 minutes and 0 seconds Apollo 13 was about 180,000 nautical miles from Earth. The pressure sensor in one of the SM's oxygen tanks had earlier appeared to be malfunctioning, so Cy Liebergott requested that the stirring fans in the tanks be activated.